Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Uncle Max Cookery Lessons with a whole orange and almond cake. Hello, in this video I'm going to be making a cake which I hardly ever do, in fact maybe never do on this channel anyway. And this is, the reason why is because this one is made with almonds instead of flour, so I'm avoiding flour because I'm you know, trying to cut down the carbs. And also what I like about this one is it uses whole oranges, so these are going to be boiled and then turned into like a puree and that's going to be mixed with the rest of the ingredients to form this really, really, really tasty orange cake. <laughs> Alright, so there's your ingredients there and the full recipe will be in the description below, but it's very simple. So bring some water to a boil or to a simmer. That's extra to the recipe, well to the recipes I've researched. There's some clove, juniper and star anise all broken up there. I thought we got an hour of gently poaching these oranges. Why not add a little extra flavor to them that way? So obviously there's me breaking with the recipe. This is not how my nonna made it, I know, sorry. But anyway, one hour of poaching gently has left them all soft, but you've got to let them cool down. Okay, well I recommend you let them cool down. So actually I put them in the fridge for about half an hour or so. And then I just cut them up because what you've got to do here is remove all the seeds and things. But weirdly, these didn't have any. I think that makes them a Jaffa. Uh, apparently, that's what that means. I don't know. But they didn't have any seeds. But if they do, get those out and any bits of like the eyes and things like that. Get those out because the rest of it in your food processor and you know, blend for. No, not doesn't have to be till it's like a completely smooth puree. It can be a bit chunky, a little bit lumpy like me. And uh, that's that done. Right, so this is the cake tin that I'm using for this. And uh, I buttered it to make it a bit, you know, more likely to get this cake out in one piece. And then I make like a cartouche, that's a bit of baking parchment. You can see I've raced through that process there. You've formed that into that shape there, like folding it in half in half and in half and in half again. And then you measure it, the diameter, and then when you open up, you've got a perfectly fitting bit of paper there. That's just security, really. We want this cake to come out and be as one and not be in little bits stuck to the to the cake tin. Here's me separating eggs. Is this absolutely necessary? No, you could probably just put the whole eggs in your uh, bowl, the stand mixer, and whisk that up and get that light and fluffy. But I, I want to get extra fluffiness, extra lightness in this. So... That's me dividing the sugar, or in my case, xylitol, and there will be two recipes in the description, one with the water I used and the other which, for normal people that are not denying themselves, sugar might use, but I, I generally don't like the sweetness that much anymore. So the egg yolks, I just whisked by hand, just to get them sort of, so that the sugar grains, or the xylitol grains, were dissolved. It doesn't have to be really light and fluffy, but you want to get the egg whites light and fluffy as possible. So that's mixing the baking powder with the ground almond and just mixing that a little bit so that that's well incorporated into the almond. And then we're going to just gently fold or stir that in to the egg yolk mixture followed by this orange pulp mixture. Oh, what a wonderful colour that is as well. That's great. So here's, this is a technique you'd use to get... Egg, whipped egg white into another mixture. You generally put one or two spoonfuls in it first and you kind of beat that in. And then you mix that mixture into the rest, the remaining of the whipped egg whites. And you fold and cut and you fold and you cut. And you do that for a little while, but you you, point, you choose your point when you stop. Uh, I was happy that it was well incorporated. There might have been the odd spot somewhere of egg white, but that's okay. So I fill up my cake tin give it a little pat down. Realise I've got a little bit of uh, mixture left over, so yeah, let's not waste that. I just grabbed a little loaf tin, quickly scrunched a bit of paper into it. And this is now just decoration time. If you want to decorate, you might want to do this. Those are little blood oranges that we had at home, and I thought, well, they're gonna look really lovely. And they do, don't they? And then I thought, well, I've got some flaked almonds on top, let's put those as well, hey? So we've got the oven preheated, 170, that's 340 Fahrenheit. And that's approximate time. Um, you're going to do the skewer test. It could take up to an hour. If you don't want it to get any darker like that, you can always put a bit of tin foil or aluminium foil over the top. But I like it like that. So the skewer test worked. It, the skewer came out nice and clean and it was boiling hot. So we know it's ready. Leave it to cool before 
unmolding it and that's a good technique for doing that there and they pause there for the um, the thumbnail maybe and uh, let's cut a slice but anyway gonna hand you over to me while I taste this thing all right so we have a wonderful light sponge full of oranginess let's have a go mmm It has almost like a souffle consistency to it. It's so light and airy. And the, the orange flavour is hard to nail down because it's not what you're used to. It's not like the, the acidic orangey flavour. It's not the zesty flavour. It's the whole orange. And it's that pith as well, that bitterness, which does mellow with the cooking. And it's just, mmm, it's absolutely fantastic. And I like this bit on top as well, but it goes all chewy. Mmm. Oh, yummy, yummy, yum, 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 yum. Um, mm, nice little shot of coffee, or cup of tea, whatever you want to go with it. But I think you will really, really like this. So thank you so much if you ever actually like and subscribe and comment and all those sorts of things, because we're still pretending that makes a difference here. But uh, if you wouldn't mind doing that sort of stuff, I would really, really appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video coming pretty soon. Bye then. Um.